When people ask me, so what is it that you do? And I reply, well, I'm a martial art instructor. The common reaction I get would be, whoa, better not mess with you. I mean, it's true. Last week, <laughs> Last week again, I had a meeting with my bank manager, and uh, he told me, I checked your website, and I saw your videos. Oh my God, I didn't know this is what you do. How come a cute and small girl like you can kick ass like that? <laughs> it made me smile every time. When we think about martial arts, people imagine uh, punching, kicking, self-defense, fighting, but it's not the entire picture. And let me tell you a secret today. This is not what martial art is all about. Martial art was never a choice for me. It was something that was chosen for me. I started when I was a kid in Tahiti, and my dad was my first instructor. He was very severe and strict and I wasn't athletic at all. I was very skinny, often sick, and I had asthma. So it was difficult for me. I just hated it, and I just wanted to give up. But my dad used to watch uh, some kung fu movies. You know those kind of <laughs> kung fu movies where the masters are old with a long white beard, through the masters, I understood the true value of martial arts. Although they were old, they were often deadly and quite happy. They could fly in the sky, and nobody can defeat them. I admired those masters not only for their mastery of Kung Fu, but also because they mastered all aspects of life. They mastered their health with Chinese medicine, they master their mind, they master their body. And I think that's why I never gave up. When I was 18, my dad died. And I suddenly found myself at the head of my family. My mom was devastated, and I have to take care of my family. My brother and sister were only eight years old at that time. So I took a job. And uh, at the same time, I pursued my studies in law. I was raised to be successful professionally, so I did what was expected of me. After I get graduated, I became a lawyer, and uh, I was the youngest lawyer in the firm I was. And for six years, I built a promising career, and I have a comfortable future. But there was something missing. I wasn't happy. Although it paid the bills, suing people wasn't the best way for me to reach happiness. <laughs> and I forgot about those Kung Fu masters. When I met my future husband, Fred, he reminded me of those masters. He was, and he's still, a martial arts instructor and personal development speaker. He reminded me of those masters who combine not only the art of fighting, but the art of healing as well. He was the first person who helped me begin to understand that we all have a mission, a destiny in our life. That's what our soul tries to tell us when we relax, when we meditate, when we dream. It's what connects us to the purity of our childhood wishes. But when we grow old, when we grow up, we kind of shut down our instincts, our inner child, our inner voice. And yes, soul is something people forget the sound of. It's like a muscle. You use it or you lose it. So when he told me about his idea to leave everything behind and to go for a trip around the world to further study martial arts, um, personal development, spirituality, and traditional medicines, I thought that idea really talked to me. And for the first time, 
I decided to listen to my soul instead of my fearful intellect. So, in 24 hours, I quit my job. And I remember that day I went back home and I told him, all right, I resigned, we can leave now. <laughs> we started our trip in uh, China, and uh, from a trip that should have lasted one year, we ended up being international homeless for four years. We chose China at the beginning because it's my roots, my culture. And what is funny is that um, I'm Hakka Chinese. I speak Hakka, but I don't speak Mandarin. It's my husband, who is Caucasian, who speaks Mandarin in the family. <laughs> and um, in China, automatically, people turn to me to, to talk in Chinese. And I just replied with the only word I knew at that time, which was Ting Putung. And I just... <laughs> Show them, okay, you should talk to the white guy. <laughs> everywhere we went, every time we met someone, um, every time we learned from the masters, a uh, teaching, a lesson was delivered to us. I remember one of our masters in China, an old guy with a white beard. So when I saw him for the first time, I told to myself, oh my God, this is the master from the old Chinese Kung Fu movies. <laughs> he exists. I found him. And he was a real master. He told us about Chinese medicine and the use of herbs to heal yourself. He healed my always cold hands. And uh, he was a very humble man, um, passionate about his heart, always happy, always positive. And he taught us, the most amazing lesson when we left him. This old guy who lives away from everything in his mountain told us in his best English, life is short, just be happy. During our trip, um, we trained every day and uh, it was a real challenge for me. Um, I have to overcome my fears every time Martial arts is a man's world, and most of the time I was the only woman. So as I wasn't, my physical condition wasn't as strong as them, I had to push myself not to give up. When we were in Thailand, uh, we trained in Muay Thai, I was just terrified when I learned of the daily training program. 5 a.m., you wake up, you train for one hour on boxing bags, push-ups, sit-ups, drills, and then we go in the jungle for jogging, running in the mountains for one hour or more. I mean, running. Me, who never last more than 10 minutes running, I almost cried. After that, we have to go back to the camp, train again until lunchtime, and we do the same routines in the afternoons. I can tell you it was hell for me at the beginning. I really felt that, oh my God, what am I doing here? When we were running in the jungle, all the men were far away ahead of me, and I really felt alone. But in that situation, what are you going to do, right? Or you just give up, and so what? You just stay here, nobody's going to rescue you. Or you take your courage in two hands, and you just move forward. So after a few months, I realized how strong the human body can be. I saw many improvements, and um, I was really proud of myself. During this trip, we didn't have a lot of money. We, just, we left home with just enough uh, to pay the plane tickets. So often, we ended up um, sleeping on the floors of temples or martial arts schools, doing cleaning jobs in exchange um, of learning from the masters. One day, we were in Canada, and it was winter time. We didn't have any money left, and for dinner, we had only one egg for two. <laughs> that day, I remember, we look at each other with my husband, and instead of being sad, we laughed. And we split it, the, egg, the egg in two, and uh, we decided that is going to be the best egg ever. And we just eat it like it was a gourmet meal. So that day, we understood that we are the ones 
who choose how to react on each situation, positively or negatively. And it reminds me a story of one of our teachers. There were two boys on a beach, and a big wave crashes on, on them. The first boy cries. The second boy laughs. So you see, in the same scenario, you choose how to react, right? And each day can be the worst or the best day of your life. During this journey, we met only a few people who were doing what they really loved, what they were passionate about, helping others or trying to do something to make the world a better place. Those masters, people who not only masters martial arts, but the art of living, help me understand what my life could be if I decided to trust my instinct. They gave me the information to change the vision of my life and the world. So what do those masters have in common? Martial arts, yes, but respect, honor, honesty, courage, determination, self-discipline, health, happiness. What did I learn from this trip? Everything. I learned how to live. Life is a fight, a fight against ourselves for ourselves, because each fight makes us grow. Life is a choice. You choose your own destiny. You choose to be unhealthy by eating junk food or drinking alcohol, or you choose to be healthy by eating organic vegetarian food. I had a difficult childhood. I had a sad childhood. But we all have our history, our issues. The real question is, what are you going to do with that? I wasn't happy. I wasn't close to my family. But today, my brother and I, my sister are my best friends, and my mom. She told me I love you for the first time after I came back from this four years trip around the world. So you choose to be happy or unhappy. I wanted to share what I've learned with as many students as possible. Martial art is the tool I choose to change my life. And as you see, it's not all about combat. And if you train long enough, if you never give up, eventually you will find the secret ingredient to be happy. So my husband and I decided to open a school in Singapore. Our school changed people's life in all aspects. Body, mind, spirit, health. And as one of our teachers used to say, changing the world, one black belt at a time. It's not because you are a woman that things have to be difficult. It's because we don't dare that they are difficult. So remember, femininity is a strength. If I did it, you can do it too. Thank you. So now um, my training partner and I will show you a short performance about the cultural part of what we teach in our school. And at the end, we're going to do what we call a carenza, which is a um, fight with no contact. It's actually a fight where you, we show the skills of each opponent. And uh, in the old time, it was enough to decide who wins in the combat without any contact. Thank you. <laughs> 